but who threw diplomacy out the window when dealing with those who crossed her path. The curtains have come down on Lucy Modoni Kibaki, former first lady, wife, mother and grandmother. Kenya's no ordinary first lady. Nyeri is where it all began. Lucy, a pastor's daughter, was born in 1940 in Mukorene to Reverend John Kagai and Rose Nyashomba. She began her educational journey in Nyeri before she joined the prestigious Alliance Girls High School. She was later to take up the chalk and chalkboard after training as a teacher. She rose to the position of a principal and oversaw operations at a teacher training college in Kiambu. But her fortunes would begin to change. In 1960, she met the man who would become her husband, Mwai Kibaki. Kibaki had just returned from Makerere University after resigning as an assistant lecturer in economics. The Lucy Kibaki romance went on for two years, during which time Kibaki served as an executive officer for Kanu. In 1962, Kibaki married Lucy. The same year, he left his role in Kanu. A year later, Kibaki was elected to the Kenyan parliament after Kenya gained independence in 1963 and began a political journey that would see him occupy the highest office in the land. <laughs> Under the Daniel Moy presidency, Kibaki rose from Minister of Finance to Vice President before being demoted to the Ministry of Health after falling out with Moy. After the restoration of multi-party democracy, Kibaki resigned from government in December 1991 and founded the Democratic Party. His shot at the presidency in 1992 was unsuccessful and so was his bid in 1997. Lucy Kibaki did not secure residence at State House just yet. Hello. Hey. But in 2002, hey. under the National Rainbow Coalition, Kibaki was elected president, and Lucy, who had remained in the shadows during Kibaki's political journey, became Kenya's third first lady. It soon became clear that Lucy was not your ordinary first lady. I was angry. I was angry. She did not shy away from expressing her feelings, albeit sometimes, in what many saw as an abrasive manner. When in May 2005, the Daily Nation published a story. Rightly so, she was not an ordinary uh, first lady. She had different facets to her. Uh, but of course, one of the things that many people are remembering about her is that she fought for human rights very, very passionately. Let me sample more of your tweets. And Michelle Waikenda says, my deepest condolences and heartfelt, my, my deepest and heartfelt condol condolences to the family and friends of the late former first lady, uh, Her Excellency Lucy.